You don't need me to tell you how quickly technology is advancing. When I was born in the mid-1980s, you need a trailer to carry around with you your music player, your video camera, your book collection, and your games machine. But now it all fits on one device, which wasn't even originally designed to do anything other than call people. But what happens if we scroll forward to the future and try and guess the natural conclusion of these increasingly accelerating technologies? Will we ever see artificial intelligence exceed human ability? Will computers ever really think for themselves? Basically, are we sitting on a Terminator time bomb? Of course, computers are already pretty smart. Google, for example, can search through billions of pages on the internet and deliver personalised results to you without you even having to type in the search term properly. But for the most part, computers are actually a little bit stupid. To put it in the words of Ada Lovelace, they can only do what we know how to order them to perform. Ada Lovelace was a female mathematician who's widely regarded as the world's first computer programmer. She was also the first person to realise that computers could do more than just compute, that they could make art or images or music if you gave them the right instructions. She also, FYI, did this 100 years before the first computer was even invented. But not everyone agrees with Ada's earliest predictions, and in the last few years, artificial life has come on leaps and bounds. One of the biggest advances is something called neural networks, which allows you to set up a computer program that matches the way that neurons work in the human brain. Now this suddenly allows computers to start to recognise patterns, things like faces in an image or voices in a noisy recording or uh, good grammar in language. And that's something that humans have always been really good at, but computers not so good. But these types of codes are still a little bit rubbish, if I'm honest. Just think about uh, translation software, for example, and how far that still has to go. I think we're still quite a long way off computers becoming properly conscious in that sense. And actually, only one computer program has ever managed to convince someone that it was actually human, passing what's known as the Turing test in June 2014. But to be totally fair, it did only trick a third of the judges, one of whom was a dude from Red Dwarf, and the computer program was pretending to be a 13-year-old boy from the Ukraine who was only just learning English. But there might be another way of artificial life. If we allow ourselves to go back in time a little bit, you might have heard of the Game of Life, which is a simple set of rules devised by mathematician John Conway in response to a question originally posed by Newman to see if a machine could create copies of itself. Now, the rules of the game are very simple. You take a space and you split it up into a grid or cells, and each cell you decide whether it's either alive or dead. At the next point in time, a cell can either live or die or regenerate based on how many living neighbours it has. Even with these incredibly simple rules, some extraordinary shapes can occur, including some configurations which can indeed replicate themselves. Now, this was pretty cool for a 1970s thought experiment, but in a world where you can get a 3D printer to just print a copy of itself, it doesn't really seem like that much of a big deal. But here is something mind-blowing because the simple rules of Conway's game of life are startlingly similar to the simplest rules of the replicator building blocks that led to the earliest life forms in our universe. And as these simple structures replicate themselves, mutations can happen. And so as time goes on, after billions and billions of time steps, there's nothing to stop these mutations causing increasingly complex life forms, all within a computer simulation. And if it was allowed to go on longer and longer, there's no reason why the increasingly complex life forms couldn't go on to develop consciousness, just as we did. Seriously, scientists cannot think of a reason why life cannot occur in the game of life. Okay, so Terminator might still just be a film, but it also might not be too long before an Austrian robot turns up demanding your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Now, while you're clicking subscribe, let me just tell you that cyborgs actually already exist. So I was in San Francisco earlier this year and met a guy called Greg Gage, who has worked out a way to operate on a live cockroach and insert electrodes into its brain so that it can control its movement using an iPad. Hope that doesn't give you nightmares.